Since independence in 1964, Zambia has crafted and implemented several national development plans. These development plans are aimed at achieving growth aspirations, targets and benchmarks. Each of these tools have been supported by five-year strategic plans which primarily aim at improving the socio-economic conditions of the people. The anchor of these tools is the Vision 2030. Under this plan, Zambia envisages to become a prosperous middle-income nation by 2030. By 2030, Zambians aspire to live in a strong and dynamic middle-income industrial nation that provides opportunities for improving the well-being for all. The plan embodies values of socio-economic justice underpinned by the principles of gender-responsive sustainable development, democracy, and respect for human rights among other development outcomes. Despite such forward-looking plans, Zambia's centralized system of governance and mode of dispensing public funds has caused some limitations ensuring that people in communities actively participate in managing public funds. In order to move away from the aforementioned developmental dilemma, in 1995, Zambia introduced a social and economic instrument called the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. The CDF fund was lobbied by members of parliament in 1995 to secure funds to finance projects in their constituencies. The CDF is an effort to decentralize government financing that is meant to provide funds to constituencies to facilitate for the delivery of projects and services directly to constituents. Zambia has been running a centralized um, system of government where decision making has been at the center and um, also a location of resources has been coming from the center to the grassroots systems. So um, the parliamentarians and, 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 and local authority uh, or local leaders um, really um, advocated for a system that would also in enable them to meet the immediate needs of the communities. The Constituency Development Fund was established under an Act of Parliament to provide for the management, displacement, utilization and accountability of the CDF Fund under the Constitution. The Act further speaks to the establishment of the Constituency Development Fund committees in constituencies and provide for their composition and functions. We are trying in this case to address the socio-economic aspects uh, in our country and with a, I think a, a focus of I think a, a community, I think a, a communities getting involved. Furthermore, the Act guides on the composition of CDF committee members. Among the key members in the CDF committees are two community representatives nominated by the Member of Parliament from the constituency, three councillors, two of whom are elected by the councillors in the constituency and one of whom is nominated by the Member of Parliament. A representative of the directors responsible for finance, planning, works or engineering services at the local authority in which the constituency is located also occupy space as members in the CDF committee. The CDF committee further accommodates members from different sectors in the constituency such as religious, education, medical and the civil society. Other members may be a representative of a chief where a constituency has one chief or two representatives of chiefs where the constituency has two or more chiefs. The chairperson and vice chairperson is elected among members of a CDF committee. Morgan Ngwana was recently elected as chairperson for the Material CDF Committee. The Act itself gives you about seven committee members, which you can't question. It's law. And these members of the CDF Committee are one, the area MP, three councillors, that makes it four, and then um, from the local authority, they get the director of finance, director of engineering and director of planning so that gives seven then the mp is given um, a leeway to nom nominate four um, uh, members from the community which he recommends to the minister of local government for approval some members of parliament have been accused of including their relatives in the cdf committees but material member of parliament Mao Sampa says the accusation is unfounded because the composition of the CDF committee is prescribed and determined by the CDF Act. 
Speaking for myself, I've never uh, employed, uh, uh, recommended any relative in the CDF. When I was MP 2011-2016, even now, the new CDF has been approved, CDF committee, I have no relative in there. I have a teacher, I have a medical staff, and I have a businessman in there, and three councillors. The member of parliament should be amenable to advice, expert advice in this case. Of course, people are different. There will be those that may want to overlook expert advice, but I think uh, who passionately appeal. But Bob Mubanga, a local government expert, suggests that the CDF Act be amended to insulate CDF committee members from any possible interference and abuse from members of parliament. The area member of parliament had uh, more power, especially when it comes to the Constituency Development Fund Committee, where he nominates, okay, he nominates one councillor, okay, and two other councillors have to be elected amongst the councillors in that constituency. So you find that uh, the area member of parliament might have an upper hand in terms of control. So we need to do an amendment to those areas uh, in the sense that um, the, 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 the act also gives more power and authority to those you know, that will be uh, in the committees. Uh, because uh, the area member of parliament as himself, you know, he, he, he can do the control, okay, as it was previously. So there is need to do the amendment of, um, of the act. The functions of a Constituency Development Fund, CDF Committee, are among other things to ensure that the records, returns and reports from the constituency are properly compiled. The chair has got five words, meaning five councillors. The councillor has got his Word Development Committee. So these members of the Word Development Committee with the councillor, they go around the community in their zones, even the world is divided into zones, we've got zone leaders. So with the zone leaders, they go into their zones and the world and identify the needs of the world and the people in the world. So as our role is simple, we're going to receive these reports and um, uh, the needs of the world on our table and we del deliberate on them. So once we deliberate and are satisfied, then we recommend the minister through the council. A ward is a local authority area typically confined to a set geographical boundary and population. Wards in Zambia are represented by councillors who are elected by residents of that jurisdiction. Patrick Salwusa is Kapwepe Ward 25 councillor in Matero constituency. So apart from uh, playing the role of uh, a councillor sitting on the CDF committee, there's also the pushing of projects from the Ward Development Committee to CDF and the councillor is actively involved because the, C uh, the Ward Development Committee will come up with the plans and forward them to the CDF but it's up to the council of that particular ward to push that those projects are finally financed. Sebastian Lemba Lemba is the chairperson for the Kapwepe Ward 29 Ward Development Committee WDC in Material Constituency. In each ward there are zones yeah, so uh, in these zones, uh, you elect what we call the zone leaders or the zone representatives. So each particular area chooses or elects a person that is going to represent them at uh, the Ward Development Committee. And uh, from getting these zone leaders in respective areas or respective zones, you also um, uh, identify the key stakeholders in that particular area, that particular ward. So you get stakeholders from key institutions which are prominent in, uh, in, in that area. A ward development committee, WDC, works closely with zones in a locality. Zones are divided according to the number of polling stations in an area. Zones are known to be among the lowest organs in Zambia's governance structure where community members directly participate in developmental projects. The whole ward has got uh, 11 zones, 11 zone leaders. So now, with the new guidelines, it will not start from the ward development committee. It will start from the zones. For example, uh, we are having this interview from uh, Desai Compound. Desai Compound has got uh, two zones. From where we are to where Desai Primary School is, is, is one zone. From Desai Primary School to Lilanda Police is another zone. So meaning, 
all the projects in the, this part of Desai, they have to be forwarded to the zone leader. There must be a meeting in that zone, and the minutes have to, we need to have minutes, well documented. The CDF committee manages the CDF funds, which have been increased from 1.6 million kwacha to 25.7 million kwacha, taking effect this year, 2022. Dr. Sylvia Mwamba, a research fellow, public finance, at the Zambia Institute for Policy Analysis and Research, ZIP, says the CDF increase is exponential and a bold move. The 2022 national budget increased the CDF by 1,509%. Now that's a massive increase uh, when you look at um, where we are coming from. Uh, I feel that that's a very uh, bold move uh, especially that it also expands the scope of CDF to include other aspects uh, such as um, uh, bursaries for secondary school children, also using the CDF to channel uh, resources to the vulnerable groups such as women and youth. And the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development says government's move of increasing the CDF allocation is intended to spur development in the country especially rural areas. In terms of development, I think the focus has been mostly on urban areas, but uh, with the new uh, uh, direction that is being taken by the new dawn, uh, we want to see, I think, uh, some marked improvement in terms of uh, developing the rural areas that have been lagging behind in terms of development for years. And material member of parliament, Mao Sapa, has held government for the increased CDF allocation. Uh, it's a good development. Uh, I am opposition MP, but uh, where the ruling uh, government does something good, I, I commend them. Uh, but where they, I think they have done uh, something that is uh, not good for the people, I will not be shy to say so. So on behalf of the people of Matero, we are grateful with the increase of uh, up to uh, 25.7 million. So it's good news. Uh, it means there's enough resources at the lower level, at the community level, where people have a say. It used to be top bottom uh, before where it's decided on top and implemented down. CDF funds are managed under a set of guidelines anchored on the CDF Act and the Local Government Act. After the CDF allocation was increased, the guidelines have been under review to, among other things, respond to the new allocation and other dynamics that have arisen. And I must now confirm to you that uh, consultation has done, been done very widely, the last one being the involvement of the lawmakers, the members of parliament themselves, the representatives of other people in the nation. Uh, in the last 10 days since parliament adjourned Synod here, um, we have engaged our colleagues, we gave them the raw data uh, of the guidelines as they were framed from other consultation. They had their own inputs uh, on every article of the guidelines and um, we did our best to make sure that um, these guidelines were in conformity firstly with the CDF Act because the framework that uh, uh, governs CDF is uh, is, is actually enacted by a, a, an act of parliament. And also, uh, we make sure that the guidelines were in line with the constitution of the land, which is the ground law, um, and also the local government act. So those three um, laws, the ground law and the two pieces of legislation, are what was a guiding factor in making sure that we get it right. Under the current laws, CDF funds and projects are managed by local authorities. Osaka City Council Town Clerk Alex Mansa says the council's role in the management of CDF is cross-cutting. From the council perspective, we are actually involved from inception. From inception, uh, in terms of selection of projects, we, our input also is the, also considered as a local authority. The 25.7 million CDF allocations in the 2022 budget has placed more responsibility on local authorities. For instance, if the CDF will be released to all the seven constituencies in Lusaka, it means the Lusaka City Council will be handling about 179 million kwacha CDF funds. 
This has raised concerns among stakeholders who feel the local authorities may not have capacity to handle such huge sums of money. But the Local Government Service Commission, a government entity in charge of managing human resource issues in local authorities, says councils countrywide have qualified and competent staff to manage CDF funds. The bigger councils have six, seven departments. We have a department dedicated to finance. We have a department for HR and administration. We have depart the service delivery departments like Department of Public Health, Department of Planning, Department of Housing and Social Services. All these departments are actually adequately staffed. But since we are talking about finances, for now I will narrow down on the Department of Finance. In the bigger councils, we have five big councils. So we have the Director of Finance, with two assistant directors of finance, then we have chief accountants, we have um, group accountants, and we have a lot of staff in the finance department. And all the directors of finance in the municipals and city councils, as well as council treasurers in the town councils, are actually chartered accountants. The Saka City Council town clerk, Alex Mwasa, says questions of lack of capacity do not arise because the local authority has been handling much more money. The budget for this year is about 580 million. So you can see that coming from the past, we'll be managing a lot of resources here because it's not only resources that are generated locally, we also manage donor funds, you know, from partners like JICA and GIZ. I know for us to interact with donors like that, they've assessed our ability uh, to manage resources and account for them. So I can assure you that uh, our finance department is well endowed, endowed with staff capable of managing the funds in the constituencies. Mr. Mlenda, on the other hand, has pledged to ensure that capacity building and upskilling of staff in councils is a continuous process. As we begin to implement, there might be need to beef up, not only in the finance department, because part of the money will be used maybe for, for projects like bridges, like roads. That brings in the Department of Engineering. But Dr. Momba, the Public Finance Research Fellow at Zipa, has proposed some measures to enhance capacity in local authorities. Uh, one of those areas that I feel the staff may need to be uh, trained on is uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, of projects and also uh, they need to be trained on reporting for example um, and it's also very important that the local authorities are in tune with the communities that they serve. Meanwhile, a local government expert Boy Bumwanga has proposed the amendment of the local government act to respond to new trends and also address the issues of capacity in local authorities. We need to do an amendment of the current uh, Constituency Development Fund Act. Since the increment of the constituents, there's an aspect of uh, the bursaries for the school going, uh, you know, those that who want to go to school. So the capacity now of the local authority will hinge on the establishment and the amendment of this act, which will give them power. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, on the other hand, is confident that councils are equal to the task. The Local Government Service Commission uh, has been very gracious in ensuring that all the 116 local authorities, each and every local authority that you go to, you find an engineer, you find planners. So in the context of looking or managing the CDF, the focus should not just be on the local authority. There are various offices that exist at district level. And when we are talking of, I think, skills and the like, we will not focus on a local authority per se alone. Away from issues of capacity, local authorities have been accused of exaggerating the price of projects implemented under CDF. One of the biggest issues uh, has to do with the, uh, the BOQs, the bill of quantities, where you are working on a vegetable shelter as a councillor, and you do your estimates that uh, if you am given uh, 150 pin, I will put on a, a vegetable shelter. 
Now, when it goes to the technocrats, the engineers, the procurement, when, we, when you see now the estimates from the engineering department, maybe they are saying 300,000 kwacha. Uh, and then they will tell you that the money is not enough. We'll just uh, uh, do projects in two words. We are left out. So I think uh, some of us, we questioned the, the view of quantities. Some of them were not making uh, sense. But Lusaka City Council town clerk Alex Monsa says B of quantities, BOQs, are done according to the work at hand and not their available funds. Our officers uh, are trained, so they don't look at the amount of money involved. They look at the quality of the final product. So, they, so if you are look, building a classroom block, so they will assess the needs, they, they, they will assess the costs, the values and so on, based on what is required. Mr. Salubosa and Mr. Samba are further concerned that majority of the projects under CDF have been done by people from other constituencies, a situation which has denied indigenous residents to get jobs and create wealth. Only companies in Matero should be the one to get the contracts and it should be a registered company out of Matero. So be it a cooperative or company. So people should be encouraged to register. It only takes a day to register the company. So all the CDF should go to the people of Matera, so that the money stays there. At the moment, people from Chipata, Mayambuyas, are the ones getting the Matero contracts. And probably the people from Matero, the few briefcase uh, company owners are going to Chipata to get the contracts. And in the process, the locals are not benefiting. The local authorities are also under sharp focus to ensure that they don't engage in corrupt practices regarding CDF. The local government service commission says it has enough safeguards to shield funds from abuse. All the local authorities are required to have the integrity committees in place so that then the issues of corruption are, are dealt with. Uh, all councils will have to form the, those uh, integrity committees. The Auditor General provides oversight over all public funds and this CDF it's drawn from or appropriated by parliament. Accusations of corruption have also extended to members of parliament. First of all, if any of this CDF is abused by anybody, be it MP, council, or whoever, surely they should get prosecuted and arrested. When it's abused by uh, anybody or the council employees, uh, they should get arrested. But the system is so tricky to, to identify. Despite the promise of development in constituencies that the CDF guarantees if well implemented, Mr. Samba, an experienced politician who also had a stint as Lusaka mayor, is ironically not in support of the council managing CDF funds. This new CDF, if it should work, my submission is we should delink it from the decentralization process. That means the MP office has to be given capacity to manage it. There is a component of buzzers in there. So how will the MP's office do it? I only have two assistants. I don't have capacity. If we give it to the council, do they know the people that are in there? Uh, because then you have council officials jumping the MP's office. They just go and deal with the people at the lower ranks. They end up hijacking the elected people's roles. Dr. Momba, on the other hand, says if the CDF is well implemented, it will set Zambia on a faster route to achieve aspirations set out in the Vision 2030.